Greetings, uh, my 483 class. This is the promised video that I said I'd get to you um, from Tuesday's lecture, and that is a tour of the Beerville Labor Statistics website. But I do want you to check out the links and what is posted on our Canvas page, as you can see here. Uh, here's the PowerPoint that I'm basically taking uh, the next couple slides from. Uh, the fatality report, the non-fatal injury report, some charts from the non-fatal injury report, uh, the fatality data over the years 2011 to 2018, and then links. Uh, I got a really good question from Sam just a few moments ago asking what should what's expected for the summary for this particular lecture, or for this week rather. And that is a summary of what I have posted or what you find on the Bureau of Labor Statistic website. That's basically it. Um, I, I just need, I need evidence that you've looked at it. That's, that's what you need. Give me something unique about it or something interesting about it. And that's what I really want. Now this, what I'm about to cover is meant to make it very easy for you to decide that. This was covered on Tuesday. I talked about the fatality report, the non-fatal injury and illness report, the industrial classification system, and then the units expressed when you talk about fatality rates versus non-fatal incidence rates. These are the slides where I, I just indicated on Tuesday's lecture. We're going to come back to these in the pre-recorded. So I'm going to mention these and then I'm going to go back and answer the questions. So uh, what were the top causes of fatalities? What changed from last year? What is the current U.S. fatality rate? What is it increasing or decreasing or constant? Which industries are most fatal and what's it based on? And what other interesting facts can we learn? Then when we shift gears to the non-fatal report, what were the incidence rates for all industries, including government? Because usually it's expressed in just private industry and I'll show you. When you go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you need to read the fine print. First, you need to read the title. Then you need to read the fine print to really understand what you're looking at. If you assume what you're looking at, it's going to mess you up. And this is with someone speaking from um, experience. I've, I've messed up by not reading the fine print sometimes. Which industries have the highest injury rates? So these are non-fatal rates. What were the most frequent causes of injuries? What were the most severe causes of injuries? Which industries had the greatest difference between no loss time, lost time? We'll just do that with one very generally. And I spoke on this one. So let's get to the website. I'm going to bring it up. So here's what we have um, for this week. So I'm, I mean, I've got links here and everything, but I want to take it from the start. So bls.gov. And notice no video. I'm just kind of free fl flowing this thing. Uh, here's the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. They have a lot of other information. It's not just safety. That would be a good question to ask you when we do our midterm. If I click on subjects, like I told you, it's in the middle on the bottom. I just have to rotate down because I enlarged so I could, so it'd be more easily to view. Workplace injuries. I click on it. Here is the home for the injuries, illnesses, and fatalities. And they put the latest numbers over here on the right. So the total number of recorded cases, this is extrapolated, of course, is a little over 8.2 or 2.8 million. The cases in which we're days away from work, uh, about 900,000. The median number of days away from work, eight. The cases involving sprains, strains, tears. You, you can kind of, gives you an indication of uh, how they relate to each other because we do talk about ratios. As far as numbers are concerned for fatal workplaces in 2018, it was um, 5,250. Roadway accidents were number one for a cause. We'll look at that in a moment. Slip trips and falls, homicides. You can see how they kind of lay out. And then in general, we've got, well, I'm going to actually go through this just to kind of give you a quick tour. But, um, you know, they have the announcements here. And I also discussed it. So uh, for information on the impact of coronavirus on these things, read here. And it would be theoretical because we don't know yet. We're not going to know its full impact for probably a year and a half, two years. And they're going to, they're suggesting some changes. This will come about, they want you to speak on it by, or post comment by uh, November 6th of this year. Really what they're doing is they're adding layers to the variables 
to the classification of the variables. So instead of just classifying as a sprain, they're going to give it a secondary or what we sometimes called a child level, so more specificity. But if you don't have a lot of data or a lot of cases in which to draw it from, then you may have too few counts when it comes to the additional specificity and then things get lost in the mix. But I think what they're, you know, here they're indicating there are about 2.8 million. And from a 2.8 million perspective, adding additional specificity to nature of injury, cause of injury, information like that may give us some additional insight. We don't know yet though. And when it starts this year or next year, you're going to need several years of data to really start trending it and understanding it. So what they're suggesting isn't going to be useful for five to 10 years. Down here, it gets into discussing what the two reports are. I think I've drilled that into your brains, and I hope you know the Sawyer report is the non-fatal report, and the CFOI is the fatal. We can see recently published data. They have a lot of links in here to make things go faster, publish industry data, see latest industry incidence rates. These are shortcuts. And then we can scroll down here, and they've got featured articles. Fatal occupational injuries to older workers. So they found a trend and they spoke on it and they didn't speak on it, but they investigated it deeper. Uh, nearly 50 years of occupational safety data. That might be interesting. Let's click on that. And it's just a short, oh, we can download the PDF if we want to, if you'd want something like that. Maybe interesting to refer to. So improving stats. What do we have here? Read the fine line. Incidence rates of non-fatal occupation in a private industry only. So it doesn't include government. Shows that in 1972 is about a 10.9, and in 2018 it's 2.8. It's gone down substantially. I like to look at the trends of things, and I don't like that that thing pops up every time. But went down, went up. But since then, it's been in a pretty much downward trend until like right here, it didn't change, and right here it didn't change. What's significant? Well, this was the um, you know the recovery. We went into the, the economic depression. Here, the, the things were going really well. <laughs> so, I mean, again, 2018, that's two years ago. The, nothing to do with the pandemic. Everything was um, chugging along for our economy. Proving workplace fatality statistics. These are the numbers. Again, not rates. These are numbers. Uh, whereas before, we are just looking at incidence rates from 92 to 18. Kind of goes up, kind of goes down, kind of goes up, weight goes way down, and then it gently makes its way back up. So we're almost in an upward trend here since you know, 2013. Hmm, but that's count. Rates, you know, sometimes give you a better indication. Here's the distribution of fatal work injuries and not a fatal work injury. So it's a side-by-side -side comparison. I like this because if, if they don't really match up, you, you, you know, this we could actually compare this to the pyramids that we've been talking about. Heinrichs and Birds. So a fatal transportation, almost 40%. Transportation is only about a 6%. So from a, if we're looking at just transportation accidents, the pyramid is incorrect as far as a, you know, how it goes from one to the other. Are there a lot of near misses? Probably, yeah. So from a, from a transportation accident severity outcome, it may look more like an hourglass than a pyramid or even worse than that. <laughs> Interesting. Next, uh, 15. So this one is, so violence is a little bit greater. Is this 2018? It is 2018. Violence and other things is uh, 15, but for non-fatal, it's 7.5. Yep. These are more though. So when it's a percent, it's gonna be a higher number. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be a higher number. We'd have to, so this is 2.8 million. This is 5,000 5, something. So that wasn't a fair comparison that I gave before, especially since um, it's a count thing. So erase what I had just said a little bit ago. I'm correcting myself. I'd have to break this down from a percent to a number, and then I can look at the pyramid scheme. <laughs> I got a bridge to sell you. So slips, slips, and falls, 15% for fatality. They're number three. Um, they are number two when it comes to, um, if we were to go by a rank, I guess, they're number two when it comes to non-fatal. So they're 27%, this is 30%, this is 23. So one, two, three, here it's one, 
two, and three. Slip, slips, and falls are just a smidgen above contact. And then there's exposure to harmful substances. It's only 2.5. Overexertion is the biggest, but I can't get this little line here. Fire explosions, almost none, but here, 2%. So if, you know, from a count perspective, which percentage represents, what are the top causes of fatalities? One, two, three, four, five. And for non-fatal, it's one, two, three, four. That's 5.8, it's 4.5, so it's right there. At least with the categories they gave us, and then you can read the conclusions. That took longer than I had wanted to, I apologize. Just interesting stuff. Here is the news release for, I believe, the CFOI. It was published in December of 2019. We can get a PDF of it. We can look at charts, look at the HTML. And it looks like the this is the Soy report. So let's take a quick, these are the news releases. If we keep scrolling down, we're just gonna get access to more and more information. I may not give you the full tour here. Uh, let's see what the PDF looks like. I think this is what I provided to you. All right, so it shows the number, it shows the rate. The rate is leveled off from 17 and 18, so this isn't as alarming. We have more people in the workplace. Transportation accidents or incidents are the number one cause. They've been that way. They haven't changed much during these three years. Uh, slip strips falls, slight decrease, but um, they're number three. This is number two, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And then we've got contact here. Gosh, it's hard to tell which one's more for 2018, but this is definitely number five. Now, can we find out what type of industry? Fatality rate, this is per 100,000. We discussed that. Logging, number one. This is a rate, worker rates. So they're up right around 90 something per 100,000. Second is the deadliest catch. I mean, it's interesting. They, uh, these two both have uh, shows on Discovery Channel, don't they? Aircraft pilot, flight engineers, roofers. You would think, it's curious, you wouldn't think it would be this high, would it? But if there are very few of people who do this job, then just a few fatalities. So you have to look at the count as well to see whether it's a significant um, rate or not. Driving all the way down to, uh, they've got construction and landscaping here. Talks about worker demographics. So we looked at the causes. We saw rates by industry. And anything else here? Men are getting uh, killed at work at a much higher clip as our work wage and salary. Oh, these are counts. What if, let's look at the rates. So rates are higher for self-employed, higher for men, higher for people who are over 65, and tends to be higher for people uh, who are Hispanic or Latino ethnicity. Here we're looking at the event. It's got it over time. These are counts, I believe. So you could look at it from that perspective. We can look at it from an occupational perspective. We've got the rates. Three, five is the average. So that was another question. What's the US um, average fatality rates? 3.5 for 100,000 FTE. Stayed the same relatively. Let's see, where are some really high rates? We got a two, three here. I don't think that's gonna be our highest. It's gonna be above three, five. Ooh, 18.6 was 15. Grounds maintenance workers. Huh, didn't expect that. Oh, we got some higher ones here. We got a 22 farming. We've got a 21 here for supervisors of construction, extraction of workers. Got a 15 here. Military doesn't give us anything. Is that all they're gonna, okay, so now they're giving us, this isn't continuing, is it? Uh, for selected occupations. So let's look for everything here. Got a 23 for agriculture, a 28 for truck transportation. We knew that was going to be the highest. And then we could look at the actual numbers. Pretty big. So that's considerable. Well, yeah, the, these are right around 500. Okay. But the, you know, the, I'm just doing a quick look. Let me show the by state as well. So we get to see what uh, what's causing workplace fatalities, uh, 
what industries have bigger counts or rates, all interesting stuff. Let's go to the uh, PDF for the soy report. It shows us the incidence rate. The overall incidence rate was a question we had. Huh, I thought it was going to have it right here. We'll have to keep scrolling and find out. I did several versions of practice before I got here. Okay, so these are occupational with at least 1,000 cases involving days away from work. These are the number of days away from work cases. Retail salesperson, number one. That, that would only be if there are so many of them out there. For a second, oh, that's really interesting. Especially since we have um, so much consumerism shifting to online, right? Hmm, that's going to change, I think. Let's see if there's anything else here we can elicit. So, private industry only. It's 2.8. That would be the answer. If it was plus government, we'd have to find a different number. Government's always higher. It brings it up just a tick. So it may the actual overall may be about 2.9. Who's got the highest in 2018? I got a 4.1. I got a 4.5. Going, going. Warehouse transportation. Interesting. And that may just keep going up because consumerism, again, is going more online. More There's more shipping directly to the uh, the private residents. And with, therefore, there's more miles traveled. And with more miles traveled, there's more exposure. Be interesting how that changes. Total recordable cases, cases with days away. Who's got our highest numbers? Agriculture, fishing, hunting, our Discovery Channel. That's total recordable cases. So that's an actual count. So count, number, number, yeah. So that's not great. doesn't help us out much. You can kind of see where most of them go to by comparing the overall the highest number, the biggest percent, got a 5-7, healthcare, social assistance, has the greatest count, but we just don't know if they represent the greatest population of workers. Uh, other information here too. Interesting that overexertion bodily reaction, so musculoskeletal ergonomics, went down quite a bit, didn't it? These are incidence rates. Contact state about the same. Look at now there, it's only about five apart. Not even, whereas before it was seven. This went up a tick. And now, oh, that's number two now. So overexertion, slip, trip, fall, contact with object. Whereas last year, contact with object was number two. And then that went up slightly, transportation incidents, and then violence is down here. Interesting, I think. Tells you how everything's calculated and gives you other information. And this doesn't give us much interesting, interesting stuff. So do we know? We, I don't think we got enough information there to shut the door on that. Uh, there's information on record keeping. You know, I, I started talking about record keeping before we came here. All right, so that's everything there. Let's go over to the left now. Uh, so here we can actually go directly to information about the two types of data collection. We just looked at the news releases. National data is where I'm going to come back to. I like to go he here in order to find my information. What if we just wanted information on Wisconsin or uh, wanted to compare states? We go here. We can select a state. I'll choose Wisconsin. And what it's going to do is going to take us to who in Wisconsin, what office keeps our injury data. It is the Wisconsin State Laboratory of Hygiene. That's another great question quiz question we can go directly to um, either the incidence rates and counts from an excel document or we can look at the fatality data online there's archive stuff so if i go directly to the lab i should be able to see just wisconsin reports so they released this june 3rd of this year and it should be just about wisconsin and it does so if we want to be more specific, compare our industry or our company to our state's uh, industry peers or to our peers, this would be a better number to go off of. It's a little bit higher, yeah, but all of Wisconsin's a little bit higher. So that makes this maybe look a little bit better. So you can see all industries and state government at 3.6, state and local government is a 4.2. 
This is total case incidence rate. Again, these are incidence rates. Total for the DART, this is the DART. Here's the other recordable. So this is H, I, and J. This is H and I. This is H, this is I, this is J. Columns from the 300 log. So if I wanted to do, let's see, what is Wisconsin's uh, no lost time, lost time ratio? 1.8 to 1.9. That's actually better than the U.S. average. Nice. How about state and local? 2.2 to 2. Higher. It's more than 1 1. So this is even better. Um, state government is still good. Local government's better for 2 to 2 1. Um, so we're 20 minutes in. I'm wondering how many people stayed with. Um, and if you have, thank you. So let's give you some bonus. That is, when we do the midterm, the face-to-face -face midterm, one-on-one, -on -one, and I ask you things, I'm going to have you actually look this stuff up. So I want you to be comfortable, and I'm going to show you in a moment how we can look at the actual industry stuff, that this is total recordable cases, total case incidence rate. This is from, this is H, I, and J. This is the DART. This is H, and I. And then H, I, and J are represented here. Incidence rates. Always read. Always read. Anything else that we can take away from this? No. And they may have you show me where you'd find the state information. Well, it's under the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Wisconsin Lab. There's other information here, too. If you want to see what companies receive in the mail to participate in the survey, you can. Th there's some information here, but you can also find it back at the um, BLS site. Because over here, if we were to keep going down, state data, databases, data requests, publications, data quality. A lot of the links I provided to you for this class came from here. Just want you to know where stuff came from. Automated coding is just a system they're updating. They're in, so it's less labor intensive to transfer what people submit to things that can be analyzed and reported. Information for, so you can go here to see what people receive as far as forms. So everything is, 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 they're very transparent. You can go here and look at everything. Uh, the response rates. And I think this is referring to all the response rates for all the BLS. I don't think it's just limited to safety. Right. Yeah, it's not. It's for everything. Uh, they talk about data quality. Yeah, so they, they, they talk about a lot of issues here about um, where they get the data. And they actually refer to actual research that indicates What's here? Survey is an important indicator of safety and health. So I, I probably should have had you read this. It's a 12-page paper, BLS survey, primer. You know what? I may I may post this. This would just give you additional information. Now nah, you wouldn't like it anyway. Don't worry about it. Just know that it's there. Yeah. Uh, they are comparing. So there's response rates, and then there's OSHA ITA, which is, what is it? Injury tracking of application. So OSHA also sends out a survey to employers to collect data, and they don't want to overburden employees, employers in responding. So they're finding ways to make it easier that you submit one and both OSHA and BLS get the data. That's what they're talking about here. I'm glad they're doing that. I mean, they should have been. And then there's FAQs, and if you want to contact them. So let's go back up to the national data. We looked at pretty much all of the fatality, the CFOI stuff. Let's look at the SOI stuff. And here, we've got a news release. We've got charts, summary tables. And then they just get deeper into breaking things or comparing things. And it goes on and on until we hit 2017 data. Oh, I thought it did. But there, it takes you places. So let's look at the let's look really quickly at the news release. I don't think it's going to give me what I want. And you know what? It was already open, so I think we already looked at it. So let's look at the chart PDF. I'm almost done. Don't worry. So they talk a little bit about how they're going to express the data. So we in 2020, 2003. The industry average, no, just private industry was five, and now it's down to two eight. And remember, it's this tick up right here in the dart from a one five to one six that's so concerning because things have been pretty level. And I think it might be a little bit of a rounding error or just the combination of the um, the days away and restricted transfer. So the combination of these two. Here it talks about the distribution. Uh, Non-fatals, I believe these are counts. Yeah, number of cases in the thousands. Healthcare social assistance is number one. I believe that's NAICS 6-2. Uh, 
Then there's manufacturing, which there's three of them, and then retail trade and on and on. Here they're giving us a spread between the incidence rate and the number of cases. So from an incidence rate perspective, the agriculture, forestry, fishing is number one. They're at a 5.3. We, we saw that in the earlier data, but this is more of a overall uh, non-specific side-by-side um, -side comparison, the transportation warehousing. Um, but then you also look at the numbers here. Healthcare, way out here, but they're down here. Where's construction? We, okay, they're down here and they still had quite a few, but not as many as you would think compared to some of these others. And I think that's interesting. And incidence rates uh, by private industry, so they're cutting out things that are non-private industry, manufacturing, agriculture, arts. It's kind of in interesting to see. Here are the uh, incidence rates averages between private industry, state, and local. I think in something else you can see that, um, I think that private industry, or I mean government, the two governments only represent like one-eighth. So the private industry is seventh-eighth. So whatever they are tends to dominate. There's just slight changes. So you can see from the total case incidence right here, private industry is 2.8, this 2018 number as it is. Uh, state is 3.6, local government is really high. Lower, but they're lower employment, they represent less, so it doesn't influence the overall average. The darts, um, you can see them here. They're a little bit closer together. Private industry is the lowest, both of those. These are the days away cases, again, they're the lowest. And same with the other recordables, though the other recordables here are quite a bit higher. And I'm looking at it from a distance perspective. That's quite a distance, so is that, but that is accounted for between that right there. Because that's about a 1.1 difference, and this is about a uh, 2, no, 1.7. Yeah, 1.7 difference. Well, so that's the other recordables. So the, the local governments are reporting a lot more of the other recordables. But when we go here, we see that these are the job transfer. So for the first time, and very, this is completely bucks the trend, private industry has more restricted transfer cases. What does that mean? It's because of what I had indicated in the lecture, and that is that uh, private industry are, are rewarded by bringing workers back and having them work in limited capacity than to stay home and recover a days away case <coughs> excuse me because the money spent on a medical only work comp claim uh only counts 30 percent 30 percent of that only counts towards your emr and so there's great savings to be had and i'll get into it when we talk about work comp it's just the it's interesting the osha data reflects that that fact other information as well so as far as states they're listed here I'm not really getting what I want to see here. So I'm going to, oh, wait, let's take, oh, man, really? Oh, no, that was bad. That was really bad. Sorry. I, there, was one, there was something I'd wanted to see, and then if you're still with me, I really appreciate it. We're at the 28-minute mark. National data, non-fatal. We looked at that. We were, I think we were looking at this chart right here, the PDF. Yep, it brought us right back to it. So overexertion, number one. But you see how much it's gone down. So it was like at a 36, and now it's down to a 30. That's a great drop. So we're improving on that, but it's still number one. Slip, shifts, and falls have typically gone down, but they went up in 2018 a little bit. The difference is a lot less than it was here. Contact with object went up a little, they're down, but it's, that hasn't changed much over the last five years. So what are we doing wrong? It should be going down. They should be going down. Whatever we're doing for ergonomics... We need to be doing for contact with object, but it'd be nice if we did it more for slip trips and falls. And you can see the difference here. It was bigger five years ago, not as much. Violence is here, transportation incidents are here. So I think that's all interesting trends as well. And they've got the nature of the industry. I usually don't dwell in that, but that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back. And I wanna go to, so summary tables. And so we have incidence rates detailed by industry level. This is what I want you to be able to find. We're not gonna look at the relative standards of errors. We can look at the number of cases, but that's not important. This is the thing I need you to be able to find for the exam. Tattoo this to your brain. So if you go to um, you know, survey, whatever, summary tables, incidence rates, you can go to our national data, this. This is what we want. So I'm gonna look at it from an HTML perspective. 
because this is what I'm going to ask you to do. So all industries, private, state, local, what is their average total case instance rate? It's 3.1. Remember, it was 2.8 just with private industry. Yeah, it's right below it. The DART is 1.7 for private industry is 1.6. You see how government affects it just a little bit, brings it up. Does it do it for restricted transfer? No. Why? Because private industry was higher, and so that's equal. I mean, look at that. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's like why, you know, government accounts for uh, 0.3 increase here, but only one here. And because there's this difference here as well, that uh, government is uh, seems to be reporting things more honestly. They don't have the same sort of financial um, constraints or um, penalties that private industry has. So if I'm going to ask you, what is the NAI? What yeah? What is the total case incidence rate, DART rate, and no loss time loss time ratio to six two three NAI six two three? Will you scroll down? Scrolling, sir. Jeez, that's really careful. You don't go buy it because you may find it again in the government section. Six two three, and I, I brought that up because that's a industry I'm used to working with. Six two three, right here. Nursing care, nursing and resident care facilities. Their total case incidence rate is 6.1. Their DART is 3.7. And their other recordable is 2.4. What is their no loss time loss time ratio? It's 2.4 to 3.7. So yeah, they're, it's not as good. Not good. Um, but I know, I, I look through here to find out where these numbers are a little bit higher than that one. And then I'll put that into the exam. You can usually just like, no, nah, I'm just I can eyeball it usually and find out. And government's always there too. Oh, here's a one six to one three. Usually I can find a two to one. There's a really bad one, one point six to four. I should have noted this before. Let's see if I could find it too. Um woo. Here's a seven nine to two point five. So uh, other recordable to lost time. So no lost time to lost time is like almost a three to one. This is for vet veterinary services. Good on them. We've got a four three to a one six. It's close to about a one a two point five to one, and that's other professional. So there they do exist. I'm going to cover this one more time, everybody. NAICS. So this is the industry. This is the industry name. Incidence rates. Yeah. Total recordable cases. This is OSHA log H, I, and J. This is H and I. And this is H. This is I. This is J. So the total recordable is supposed to be this plus this plus this. But if you add them up, they probably won't always equal out. That's the rounding error. So that's why I tend not to dwell on these two. Total case incidence rate, DART incidence rate, other recordable rate. That's basically it. I want you to be able to find this. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you one more example, and then I'm signing off because I think I've covered everything I wanted to. BLS.gov. Go to subjects. Go in the center on the bottom. Workplace injuries. Brought me here. Go to national data. Non-fatal. That's the Sawyer report. Scroll down, and it has right here table one incidence rates. I can click on it from an Excel. I don't want to. I mean, if I was going to sort it and do things, I would. But here, I can just look things up. There it is. So I hope you get comfortable with that. Because for the uh, the online face-to-face, -face, you know, oral midterm exam, I'm going to have you. I'm going to give you the presenter role, and I'm going to have you show me that you can look this stuff up and interpret it. I only have a few questions, so it's not going to be a lot of time, a lot of questions. But I think I'll know who listened to this video all the way to the end and who's been practicing. I really do. That's all I got. Let me know if you have any questions, um, but we'll be doing a little bit of a review of this um, next Thursday in our uh, Thursday live, um, call it lecture or discussion.